Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time we're going to continue in the series on t-shirt that I started the last time, except we'll get into writing the rules this time, or as I've titled here, T-Shark Rules. Another way of looking at it is filtering out the noise. All right, now that we've got our console in T-Shark, or the Raspberry Pi up and running, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of packet capturing just to have some things on the screen to start with. And it should start capturing here in just a second. There we go. All right, well, go ahead and stop it for now. So this is what you would start to see, and you saw a little bit of this the last time, with uh, if you just start capturing with no filtering in place. And as you can see, there's already some things that probably we're not interested in. One of the things that I saw was this packet right here. This is the Ethernet Configuration Test Protocol Loopback Loop 100. Had not seen this one before in the other packet captures I've done with different systems. And did some research and found that this type of packet is part of the original Ethernet protocol spec, but didn't appear in the IEEE 802 implementation. So you can filter this out by doing sudo space t shark. In this case, we'll do a dash capital R, and that says we've got a rule it's going to follow. And anytime we don't want to see something, we use the keyword not. And then we'll type loop. And although the loop here in the packet description is in all caps. You need to do it in all lowercase. And we'll start up a capture. And we should start seeing the packets here. So as you notice, the loopback traffic has now disappeared. So we've got a little bit more that to, to still look at. And really what it amounts to is you're writing rules to kind of filter out the noise. And especially when you're capturing with the Raspberry Pi, you don't want it trying to, to digest everything. So we've got some art packets up here, and it's where it's trying to figure out, in this case, I've got a my Clearwire 4G mode, which is my internet connection. It's asking who's got this one address and to tell it, and it starts exchanging information. And then here's the very next packet is the uh, my MacBook Pro is actually telling the Clearwire, oh, hey, this address is actually at this MAC address. So if we want to see what's going on, because sometimes you will have slow networks if something is, is ARPing a lot and not either hearing what's expecting or just not listening. So we can actually drill down to look at just the ARP traffic. Now, if I'd spell T-shirt right, it would work a lot better now, wouldn't it? And we will just say ARP. And it'll fire up here in just a second. And we'll have some traffic. There we go. Just took it a little bit. So, you know, this starts seeing just purely the ARP traffic. And if you start seeing a lot of traffic from the same source points, then, you know, that's going to tell you right away that you may have a device that's misconfigured possibly a bad network card you know the driver even could need to be updated and fix that so we now know there's ARP traffic going on on the surface nothing looks wrong so what we will do next is we'll restart t shark and we will tell it we don't want to see loop and we don't want to see ARP and just to make things interesting I'll automatically put a count in there to say only show me the first 10 packets. All right. It Now, see, that case, it was not going to show me the first 10 packets it found. It was literally counting packets. So we'll just leave that one off. But it's good to know that that one reacts that way. And we'll go ahead and tell it now that we've got it. See, now we're seeing spanning tree. And spanning tree is something you'll see a lot with switches and especially your your higher end switches and we'll go ahead and stop the packet capture spanning tree can be a good thing can be a bad thing if you start seeing a lot of spanning tree traffic repeatedly from the same source that where you're seeing that there's some sort of recalculation going on that can be a bad thing so just like we did before with arp we can actually go through and concentrate on just the spanning tree packets and have 
T Shark tell us what's going on from that perspective. And a lot of what we're doing here is something that a good friend of mine, uh, Laura Chapel, uh, has coined the phrase many years ago. It's baseline in the network, learning what's normal for you. And that way, you know, once you see a pattern, you get used to it, then it's going to be easier to spot a problem for, for what it is. So now we've got that, not seeing anything out of the order. So what we're going to do next is we will then really go for broke. And we will tell it to not show us loop and not show us ARP and not show us STP. And we'll get started here. And with rules, there's all sorts of, you know, I'm just barely scratching the surface on what you can do. Because you can do parentheses, you can control what order the rule is interpreted in, what part of the rule. And so now you're seeing with just, you know, pretty much idle traffic sitting on here, you're noticing that I've got a device uh, somewhere on the network that is periodically checking for uh, NTP time source. And other than that, the network is, is pretty quiet. And now you're seeing some, some DNS traffic. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop this. Now, looking at DNS traffic can also tell you something. So what we'll do, and there's two ways to look at DNS traffic. So we'll do sudo t shark space capital R. And what we want to do is udp.port equals... 53 or we will do TCP port 53 and there is a difference with them if you've never looked at this before UDP was where you'll see your normal DNS lookups TCP normally is only used between DNS servers when it's doing a large zone transfer or one DNS server is completely copying all the zone information for a particular domain name. So we'll go ahead and get started. Now this one will take a little bit longer to run because normally, oh, see, I didn't have something right here. Oh, and that's because with T-Shark, as in Wireshark, you have to have a double equals. And that was where I made my mistake, but now you know what can happen when you don't have the rules set up right. So we'll start getting something here in just a second. And it's just learning, you know, kind of the ins and outs. And you can get really fancy on this if you want to. And we should see something here in just a minute. It's going to take its uh, time. Actually, we'll uh, move over here. And I will actually fire up Firefox. And then when we go back to that now you'll see that's that's what's going on and you can see all the lookups that it did you as a general may not see a lot of traffic but when you start seeing things like myip.opendns.com that's an indication somebody's configured for dynamic dns or is running a dynamic dns updating client so there's all sorts of things that then this can teach you. And then if you want to look, say, at specific uh, traffic from another host, and what we'll do in this case is we'll do sudo space T shark space capital R open quotes IP dot IP dot ADDR equal equals equals and then we'll give it the IP address of what we're looking for so in this case we'll pick on Google and it will give us all traffic to and from that particular host now this is actually going to be referencing Google's DNS so I may have to pick another uh, target to work with now this is going to give you traffic to or from that IP address if you want to look at something that's just the source or the destination, you would do src.addr for the source address or DST for the destination. 
but that's, you know, obviously I'm not generating any traffic right now to that, but that at least gives you an idea. Sometimes if you had your rule written long, that you wouldn't see anything. And so at that point, you know, you have to start backing out a little bit to see what might be the problem. And there's all sorts of combinations you can do. But as you can see, and this is kind of gives you an idea of where to go. Now, sometimes you will see, and let's just fire up T-Shark here real quick. And then I can give you uh, one example. And T-Shark. Sometimes you can specify if it's a common protocol name, like uh, STP is a good example. Now, I hit one in here earlier, and let's see if we see the traffic come up here. It would had a packet uh, name of RFE, which is Radio Free Ethernet. And I looked that one up, and that had to do with a service that was written to uh, run audio over uh, an Ethernet connection. Not seeing that come up now, of course. As with anything, you know, I wanted to show it and it's not going to be there. So that gives you an idea of just some of what you can do with T-Shark. And we're still working towards the uh, the end goal of using T-Shark as a remote probe on the network so that you can have little capture modules or, or sensors in different parts of the network that can telegraph things back to uh, to a central station. And for, you know, a little over $100 a piece, that's not a bad thing to have in your bag of tricks for when the, uh, the need arises. And this brings us to the end of another podcast. Appreciate everyone's time in watching this as well as reading the accompanying post that's on my website. To see the other videos I've done in the Raspberry Pi and other series and the articles that I've done with them, please visit my website at www.ronnutter.com. If you have any questions or have any requests you'd like me to look at in a future video, you can contact me uh, uh, via the uh, Contact Me button on the website, and I'll be glad to do what I can for you. Thank you again for your time.